Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thunamis Lure Company and welcome to today's episode of Thunamis Fishing Tips. And this is where we showcase your questions, our subscribers, our viewers. And uh, Don wrote in and he asked, what's the best way to gauge the water depth from shore without any fancy gadgets? So how do you know how deep the water is from shoreline? Well, there's one thing you could do and that is read the land. If you read the land, the land will tell you a lot about what's in front of you. If you have a cliff, a very deep cliff of land, you know that that cliff is going to continue into the water, so chances are it's going to be very, very deep right there. Whereas if you've got a beach with a, a slight slope, you know that slope's going to continue and gradually get deeper and deeper. So there's a couple of things you can do there, and, and of course if there's a point, you know that point is going to be shallow on the point and then deep on, the, on either side of it. So there's a few things you could do there, but reading the land will tell you a lot about the area you're fishing right at a glance. Now another thing you could do is use a bobber to try and figure out the depth that you're fishing. And what you would do there is tie a sinker onto the bottom and then just snap a bobber on. And, and make sure the sinker is, is fairly heavy. So what will happen is you can set your bobber, let's say, to two feet. Toss your line out. And if it's deeper than two feet, what will happen is your bobber will just disappear. It will go right down and disappear. So then what you would do is adjust the bobber a little higher. And you keep adjusting the bobber higher and higher, as high as you can. Cast it out there. And then eventually what will happen is the sinker will hit bottom. And if you hit that depth, the bobber won't go down anymore. The bobber will sit flat like that. So when the bobber sits flat, then you'll know, okay, I've got four feet of or whatever the distance is to your sinker that's how deep it's going to be there. So that technique will also help you judge how deep the water is in front of you. But by all means, make sure you read the land around you. You could tell a lot by the shoreline around you as to what's in front of you. Steve wrote in and he asked, what's one of the best conditions for ice fishing? Well, when it comes to ice fishing, first ice and last ice are best ice. So uh, at very first ice, what happens is the fish are still active and aggressive, so they're on the bite. You can have some great days fishing, ice fishing at first ice. Where you have to be careful is on the thickness of the ice. So you always need to make sure that you have safe ice conditions uh, before you go out there. Secondly, um, last ice is always best ice because the fish now have had a long winter. They know spring is coming and they start to turn on and the bite starts to get really, really hot. Now, the thing there as well, same like first ice, you have to make sure that the conditions are also safe for you to get out there. But first ice and last ice are always best. Other things to keep in mind when you're ice fishing, cloudy days are definitely better than sunny days. The fish are more active and, uh, and you'll get more bites. And the second thing is if you have clear ice conditions, look for dark patches or snow covered patches, fish those areas. Again, it produces like an underwater uh, structure. The fish will relate to those areas. They won't be spooked by you up above. Lots of advantages to fishing those snow covered areas. Now Jordan, he wrote in and asked, what advice would you give to someone for trout fishing tips? Well, if there is one tip I can give you for trout fishing, that would be to keep a very, very low profile. What that means is, you want to be as stealth as possible. So if you're running a swivel, like a T-turn swivel or any swivel, use the smallest size swivel possible. So in the case of the T-turn, you're going to want to run the small or the extra small size when it comes to, to uh, trout fishing. As far as line, you're going to want to run fluorocarbon line because fluorocarbon is less visible to fish, virtually invisible, so that'll definitely give you an advantage again because trout are very, very skittish and very, very suspicious by nature. So you want to keep as low profile as possible. Even the hook, you want to run a hook that's going to be very small and, and going to be more or less hidden with your bait, whether you're running a row bag or a minnow or a yarn fly, whatever the case may be, use a small hook. So basically, low profile for trout fishing, keep a low profile, you'll catch more fish. Folks, I want to thank you ever so much for tuning in to today's episode of Thunamis Fishing Tips. Always great to see you. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, good luck and good fishing. Okay, got it. Stick another one for good measure. Good. Beautiful. Okay, let's get this walleye right back in the water. But what a gorgeous fish. Look at that fish, folks. Beautiful, beautiful fish.